Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to October Lake in Planet Zoo, a project where we're aiming to build a really large wildlife park situated in the Canadian Highlands. In today's video, we're going to be introducing a pack of Asturi dolls to the park. If that does sound good to you and if you do like today's video, please do consider leaving a like on the video. And of course, do leave a comment down below as well and tell me what you thought. If you want to see more Planet Zoo content, do consider subscribing as well. I put out Planet Zoo videos every Wednesday at 5pm UK time. Now with the intro out of the way, let's talk about today's build. So like I said, we are going to be building a habitat for the Surrey Doll, which has been uh, released alongside the Southeast Asia pack, which we got um, about, wow, more than a month ago now? It's been a while, which is kind of surprising. Like building once a week, I think it just kind of makes the time fly a little bit faster, which is kind of a weird thought. But yeah, it's been a while now since we got the Southeast Asian pack, and this is our fifth uh, habitat build for them, for the animals that we got in that. And it's the Usuri Doe, which is actually, again, like, I think probably the least familiar animal to me out of all of them. In fact, before the pack, I maybe have only ever heard of them in passing very briefly and never really, like, had much thought about them. Now, granted, I'm not super, like, familiar with most canids in the world. I'm, like, familiar with the, you know, the big famous ones, of course like the grey wolves and stuff and like the Ethiopian wolf, you know, the um, kind of the more high profile ones, but things like dolls I've never really heard of. So it was very interesting to have them included in the pack and for me to kind of learn about them a little bit as I went through this. And they're, they're definitely very fascinating animals and I thought I'd give them quite a nice big open habitat here with a lot of uh, area for them to kind of climb around on and play and run around and give them some of these lovely water pits as well for them to just kind of have some fun in and you'll see in the cinematics of course we got quite a few shots of them playing in there and there's going to be plenty of rock work in today's habitat as usual <laughs> well I say as usual I mean this area in fact this entire park has just been so much rock work uh, because we got the full rocks with the aquatic pack and I've just never been able to stop using them they're so good they really fit like the zoo aesthetic they make for really incredible artificial rock work and cave work so you are going to see a really nice artificial cave. And this is me actually just looking into the Zoopedia to learn a little bit about the Usuri doll itself. And uh, as I kind of went through that and looked ab learned about them online and stuff like that, they're really quite interesting creatures. So I'll talk a little bit about them while we're building uh, the habitat itself and then I'll come back and of course talk a little bit more about what we're building. But of course the, uh, the Usuri doll is a canid species native to kind of a lot of Asia, surprisingly. I thought, of course, um, when they mentioned it was part of the Southeast Asia pack, I thought maybe it was native to areas of Southeast Asia which I wasn't as familiar with, but they're actually native to quite a big chunk of Asia. So across most of the uh, Indian subcontinent, kind of most of Southeast Asia, apparently it was at some point native to China, but it's most likely extinct there now. Even Mongolia and kind of the far eastern swathes of Russia, which is quite crazy. Um, it's believed that in those areas they are mostly extinct, although um, some people suggest that they might still exist there just in like isolated pockets. Uh, unfortunately, they are endangered, uh, according to the IUCN. There's uh, still, they're not like critically endangered, but it is uh, unfortunate that they are uh, threatened. They live in quite a lot of different um, kind of habitat ranges, ranging from anywhere from forest to grassland to like the highlands and stuff like that. So it is relatively adaptable as far as canines go. They are very unique looking. They've got these beautiful reddish kind of rusty fur. Absolutely gorgeous. They look almost like kind of like fox colored kind of. Ab really really beautiful and they've got such an unusual face almost. Like if you look at them straight on they've got these really big ears and almost like a, a face which is too small for its head almost. I don't really know how to describe it. And there's a no I know there's another canine, which I cannot remember the name of right now, which has a similar face, but can't quite remember. But they, they are so interesting, and in the wild, they, they feed on kind of other wild mammals. So things like, you know, wild boar, uh, water buffalo, stuff like that. Um, according to what I've read online, it's kind of strange, but apparently they've even been seen hunting elephant calves in packs, which is um, really probably quite a like a risky thing to do so you know like for a relatively small canine like this to be hunting something which has a parent that could you know absolutely toss you like miles away with its trunk you really don't want to be 
caught doing that. So definitely a risky, uh, risky species. It's interesting that at one point the, uh, they were mostly threatened because of poaching and the fur trade and stuff. But nowadays, unfortunately, um, they've been diminished to the point where those aren't even viable uh, things anymore for the black market. So they are now just threatened just because they've been reduced so much. And it's like, it is really quite a shame. But uh, they are being protected in captivity. They are over 110 dolls in captivity across the world and they are bred worldwide as well. And in India and a few other places, they are protected as well. I believe there is even a doll conservation center in India, which is really quite cool. So yeah, really, really fascinating animals. And I'm, I don't know if I've seen them in captivity. I found out there were some in Budapest Zoo, which I've been to uh, quite a long time ago now, maybe about six years ago. So maybe I will have seen them, but I just can't remember. Um, so yeah, well, maybe I saw them. Budapest Zoo is a great zoo, by the way. I just, uh, I well, from what I remember, it might, like, my memory might be kind of foggy because it was so long ago, but I do, I do remember really liking it. I thought it had a great selection of um, animals and it was just really big, I thought as well, which is quite cool. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll go back someday. I, I know I had a plan at one point. So basically before COVID was a thing, I had planned to do a European zoo tour. So I was going to plan, I had a list, I was going to visit all the, I think I had a list of like 25 of the best zoos in Europe and I was planning to do that on because I was in Malaysia most of last year and I was like planning to do that trip as I was coming back up to the UK to do my university, like my master's year. So that would be a good kind of travel journey like as I came up here. But of course COVID and travel suddenly became a much more difficult thing. So I had to postpone that journey and it's still being postponed because I haven't gone on it yet. I might go at some point in the summer if, but I doubt it, Maybe it might need a lot more time for COVID and stuff like that to ease up, so not super um, promising there, but what I am planning to do is visit a lot of the zoos in the UK, because uh, if you don't know, I'm doing a master's in science communication right now, and I'm planning to do my dissertation on zoos and how they're kind of communicating the differences between charismatic and non-charismatic animals, so you know, like things like tigers and lions they get all the kind of love and attention same with elephants and stuff like that but then there's plenty of animals which are super important to the ecosystem also really endangered but they're not just like as um friendly to the public so like people don't know much about them people aren't really interested in seeing them as much and i'm just saying this for the general public of course there's plenty of people who are interested in some of these animals but like imagine like a giant japanese salamander they're not like the cutest things in the world. I think they're cute, but most of most of the public generally don't. Um, and they are very endangered, but, and they, you can find them in zoos sometimes, but it's just very hard to get like the general public interested in their conservation and stuff. So that's kind of what I want to look through in my dissertation, just kind of figure out how do we get these kind of like lesser known species to kind of share the limelight a bit with the more charismatic ones. So that's going to be a fun project and for that project I'm going to try and visit many UK zoos. Not just locally to me in London but like across the UK so that'll be a lot of fun I think. And because things in the UK are easing up a lot more in terms of the pandemic like most people are getting their vaccines hopefully I'll get mine soon. And it should be quite a fun like little road trip type situation if I can do it. If not I'll probably just do the whole thing online which will be a shame but you know we live in strange times. <laughs> Anyways, I just talked about what you've been seeing on screen, uh, my little tangent aside. Uh, well, you all have seen me build most of the habitat, basically. I've built an artificial cave over there for kind of an indoor viewing area for the dolls. This kind of reminded me a bit of what we did with the snow leopard here, and it also meant it was meant to kind of harken back to... Uh, if you've watched my previous uh, Planet Zoo series, Sanakov Land, in there we built an African wild dog habitat and this is kind of similar in the sense that it has a very similar looking cave and kind of similar kind of rock structures for what they could climb on and stuff like that. It's interesting that I've kind of um, used all the different canines and canids from Planet Zoo except for the one like uh, the grey wolf itself which is the, probably the most famous out of all of them. And I plan to use it in this zoo, but I, I don't really necessarily know where. So I'm thinking this zoo itself, October Lake Wildlife Park, might not necessarily be limited to this side of the lake. What I might do is cross over to the other side of the lake and then 
put down over there what I would be animals more native to this range. So the timber wolves, the grizzly bears, that sort of thing. Maybe I'll have them over there. And that side might be more of a kind of a wildlife sanctuary as opposed to just a flat out zoo. Anyways, we are coming up to the end of this episode. Hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Usuri dolls. Hope you enjoyed hearing about my random like plans for my dissertation, I guess. I've been busy working on like the literature review for it the past um, few days, so I've kind of just like still got it on my mind. So apologies for just randomly talking about it, but you know, it's kind of in line with this topic, you know, zoos and stuff, so I thought you might be interested in hearing it. Anyways, yeah, like I said, coming close to the end of the episode, just doing some last minute detailing. But like I didn't describe much of what we were doing on screen because it is very similar to what we've been doing in a lot of the previous episodes for the previous animals like the Barbarossa and the Sun Bear. Uh, one different thing we did here was I like, layered a lot of like brick-like rocks on top of the kind of the pool enrichment so it looks really nice and the dogs can still use them pretty fine. So I think it works out really well. I've got some really cool cinematics as well uh, of the, uh, the Zuri dolls kind of having fun in there. They're using their the tug rope toy and stuff like that. It's a lot of really cute and really fun to watch. So I hope you enjoy that as well. And as, as we finish up, actually, the last bit we're going to be doing is just adding in loads of foliage, like a lot of foliage, uh, lots of bamboo. But I, I'd like to keep big paths open so they can run through and just have a great time just kind of barreling past because they run really fast as well in the game. And it's really nice seeing them run across the habitat like this. A new technique I've been a bit uh, really fond of is using the bramble bushes to kind of line areas uh, between different elevations where there's rocks and stuff as you can see on screen. And as usual with these more tropical builds for this park, the bamboo really works to bridge that tropical vibe with the tiger biome we are in fact building in. And uh, with all that being said, uh, we're finishing up now so I hope you enjoy the cinematics at the end. Do like today's video if you did like the video, um, leave a comment down below, tell me what you thought, tell me what animal you would like to see next, I am open to suggestions. And um, yeah, subscribe for more Planet Zoo videos, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!